The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. Remember that. The Democrats are trying to rig this election because it's the only way they're going to win. You know, when the president says things like this, for some, it's somebody telegraphing. They don't think November 3rd is going to go well for him, but it also makes Democrats nervous. In fact, Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut says they have a contingency plan in case the president actually declares victory before all the votes are counted. Now, since we're seeing record number of mail-in and absentee ballots being requested, and many states won't even process theirs until Election Day itself, it's likely that we will not have a result on November 3rd. And my next guest, he warns of what's called a red mirage, showing Trump in the lead on the 3rd, followed by a blue shift after the mail ballots are counted. That could cause all sorts of chaos. Josh Mendelson, he's CEO of Hawkfish. It's the digital data firm founded by Michael Bloomberg. And Josh, we look at these numbers, 50 million plus that have voted early. If I said to you a month ago, that's where we'd be here, um, you know, with more than a week left in October, would you have been surprised by that number? Or did you guys forecast, especially with COVID, that many people voting that early? I think that anyone who says that this is anything other than unprecedented would just be lying. It, the amount of enthusiasm from both sides of the aisle uh, for voters coming out and vo voting through mechanisms that they prefer, which, by the way, those do differ by party, and that's part of the Murad Mirage concept, um, is, is just has never been seen before. So, Josh, clear up. When we say Red Mirage, I, I, you know, for me, I, and I think a lot of people get our arms around, okay, well, when they start counting in uh, the, the votes before you count in the mail-in votes, it'll seem, um, with just that data involved, that Trump's probably going to have his best window early uh, in the counting on November 3rd. But when you add them all up, um, very probably, if we were to believe the polls, we may have a different story. But when we look at the early voting, and I know you guys have been focusing particularly on the swing states right now, so far it's gearing heavily Democratic, those that have voted early. And two questions for that. One, have people started changing their minds as to how they're going to vote with all the fears, all the post office changes, et cetera, where they planned because they had health concerns to vote via mail. Now they're just going to do it in person. And two, given the volume of this do you still have this concern of a red mirage, given the turnout so high and seemingly overwhelmingly Democrat, or at least by a healthy margin, could the returns at 11 o'clock or so on November 3rd be different than you forecasted a month ago? Well, to be clear, what we laid out with Red Mirage was the scenario. And the scenario took as its fundamental guiding principle that Democrats were two and a half times more likely to vote by mail than a Republican. And so given that those vote by mail ballots take longer to count, as you said in your opening, many states don't in fact count them until after election day. You would have this moment where the machine counts, so those in-person November 3rd votes would show up very quickly in the AP feed and be reported by networks, whereas those vote by mail ballots would take several days to count. Uh, still holds it and out, it bears forth rather in this data. Um, the enthusiasm has been incredibly high, as we discussed, um, and, and sure enough, the partisan split is there. Democrats are willing to vote by mail. Uh, in a state like Florida, which counts progressively and will report out that data and does every day, uh, you can see it. The disparity between Democrats who have voted by mail and Republicans who have voted by mail uh, is quite substantial, particularly relative to 2016. But when you look at early vote in person, so those folks who have shown up at a ballot box and close the curtain and cast their vote, uh, has almost a perfect bipartisan split. So unquestionably, this notion that Joe Biden has more supporters among those that are going to vote by mail is real. And so delays in getting those vote by mail ballots counted, tabulated, reported is what is likely to create and sow confusion on Election Day, which is what makes the president's remarks so dangerous. I'm sure I speak for a lot of people. I got loved ones who are seniors who were planning to vote by mail. They said, screw it. I'm not taking any chances. I'm going. You can still vote in person. And just because you requested a mail-in ballot, if you choose to go in person, you're not jeopardizing the legitimacy of your vote, right? You know, it that's one where it varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Some, fo some places, when you request that absentee ballot, you come off the rolls uh, when you try to go in person. 
Um, generally, I think it's really important for voters to make themselves aware of the rules in the county in which they live, the jurisdiction within which they live. And if there's any confusion, but they find themselves showing up in person, bring that ballot they got in the mail with them uh, as, as a useful tool. Um, but having said all that, fundamentally, the absolute best thing to do if your health permits, put on that mask, bring your hand sanitizer, go vote early, get it done, make sure your vote counts. Okay. These are a couple terms. Uh, explain what they mean and why they're so important. Low frequency and newly registered voters. Uh, you guys are getting into the minutia and the data to try and figure out who's most likely to vote here and what could be different this time than four years ago. Explain those two groups. So for us, um, newly registered voters is a little bit more obvious. Those are going to be your individuals who have uh, registered to vote since the previous uh, presidential election. I and mean, obviously participation during a presidential election is far greater than midterms, which is also far greater than any other off cycle uh, election a voter might participate in. And um, his, the historic norm is that those new voters don't show up in uh, particularly high rates uh, when it comes time to cast their ballots. And yet right now we're seeing uh, quite the increasing participation uh, among those new voters. Again, Republican and Democrat uh, exceeding 2016 levels, but Democrats by a, a far more substantial factor, about 70% in a state like Florida uh, relative to the 2016 baseline. So that's quite material. Now, the other set, those lower propensity voters, those are folks for whom they only sporadically vote. You'll see them in occasional presidential. Um, for us, that's always an interesting uh, bellwether because it starts helping you understand what turnout might look like. Right? You're looking for proxies for November 3rd for those election day voters. And the more sporadic votes you see cast, uh, generally it's a bit of a signal to suggest that there is very high enthusiasm. That high enthusiasm uh, persists across a group of folks who would otherwise say, you know, I've got more important things to do than, than go vote right now. And, um, and so far it's providing a pretty positive signal uh, for Democrats. But, um, but, but the, like I said, the, the jury's still out because of the vote by mail disparity, Democrat to Republican, and then the fact that early voting in person is about 50-50. All right, Josh. Um, now, finally, there's something you can't measure in trend lines, um, but you're only going to learn like the rest of us on November 3rd or maybe even in the days thereafter. What concerns you most of, and I'll do the laundry list, uh, you have voter disenfranchisement potentially, uh, you have voter suppression, you got voter intimidation, God knows even guys with guns maybe, you'll have the inevitable court challenges, you'll have Trump going out on uh, national TV and say at 10 p.m., race is over, I won, stop counting ballots. What scenario, and unfortunately none of those I think are implausible, concerns you most that if you say, you know, if they count every vote and we don't cheat, I think my data is right here. But if they do X, all bets are off. Yeah, it's a it's a really substantial question because, that, like you said, every single one of those things feels plausible in the moment we find ourselves in. And every one of them could have a, an incredibly dramatic impact. Um, but I'll add one that for me is it feels particularly pernicious um, because it's so avoidable. And that is the number of folks who plan to vote by mail, vote by mail, but think they voted by mail but in fact haven't voted by mail because they've in some way incorrectly submitted their ballot. Um, case in point, there are about 5,000 Democrats in Florida who think they've cast a, a vote, probably for Joe Biden. Um, the state has already said, we're not counting that ballot because they forgot to sign it. And, uh, and so those numbers can really add up. It's some of the induced risk in vote by mail. But then ultimately, just as you opened, um, I think that's probably the nightmare for all of us as Americans. And it is, so what if every vote is counted and the result is clear and Joe Biden has won if Donald Trump decides to make it an issue and decides to galvanize uh, a, a set of folks who, uh, who are willing to believe that those rightly counted ballots are in fact uh, not rightly lawfully and accurately counted. Um, it, it, it's a, it's really a, uh, it just puts a, a real pock on our democracy. It calls our democracy into question, like he's done by uh, incorrectly maligning the vote by mail process and calling it fraudulent. I mean, that's just terrifying. And to have that come from the White House and, and be part of the, the, the history of the American presidency, hard not to have that uh, land, I think, on all our consciences as we move toward November 3rd.
Well, then we're going to learn a lot about not just Donald Trump, because I think we know by now who he is. We're going to learn about the integrity of our court system. We're going to learn uh, for those who've looked the other way or bitten their lip where their line is. Um, and unfortunately, people are going to get a civics lesson, I have a feeling, uh, in November 3rd and, and the week thereafter. And I think people are also going to learn, you know, where does it go between party and country? But uh, we're not there yet. Um, but as uh, you just heard from Josh, every vote will count this year and get out and make yours count as well. Josh Mendelson, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, when we come back, a reporter who infiltrated white supremacist groups, she's going to tell us what she found. It's an eye-opener. She's going to tell you who these folks are, what they say about President Trump, and why you ought to be really afraid.